Welcome back, and we're going to start working on getting our skeletons up and running. So let's go ahead and create a few variables underneath the sensor. So we do a const int, and we're going to call that uh, skeleton count is equal to 6. And this is always going to be equal to 6, even if you don't have 6 skeletons on screen. So uh, that's why we made it a constant integer. So let's go ahead and create the uh, skeleton array. And, and make it an array. All skeletons is equal to new skeleton array of. Uh, let's pass in our constant integer. So that has set up uh, our basic variables we're going to use. Let's go down here outside of our using statement inside of our all frames ready. And let's say skeleton first is, uh, let's just call it skeleton me is equal to null. So we have uh, null for our first skeleton. And uh, let's create a function that uh, we can reuse here. And let's let's just make it a private void get skeleton. And then uh, let's pass in all frames ready event args e. And we're going to reference out a skeleton because we're going to do some stuff to the skeleton. And uh, yeah, that's all we need. So now let's using. Uh, skeleton frame uh, skeleton frame data is equal to e dot open skeleton frame seems similar to what we did for the color so uh, of course like just just like we did for color we have to make sure it's not null skeleton frame data is equal to null then let's return so we break out of here Otherwise, let's do these next three lines. Skeleton frame data dot copy the skeleton data to all skeletons. So we're copying all this skeleton data from the frame to all skeletons. And that is why our array needs to be six because we're getting all skeletons. Even if there's one, it'll copy one into the array. But if we have all six, which is the maximum at the current release, then all six would be put in the array. And that's why we need to initialize the array with six skeletons. Um, I, I said three lines, uh, sorry, the next two lines, so that one, and this is our last line for the function, is equal to, uh, we're going to be using a Microsoft, uh, not Microsoft, a C-sharp link uh, command, which is by Microsoft, but there's also Mono, which uses it, but anyways. So from, uh, I don't seem to have my link up here, I do, system link, all right. Um, all right, I'll just continue. Uh, I may work anyway. So S and yeah, there we go. I just had to continue. In all skeletons, where S dot tracking state is equal to skeleton uh, tracking state dot tracked. So it's tracked. Select S, and we're going to check the first or default is what we're going to return into that. So we're just basically getting the first or default skeleton uh, from this leak statement, which pretty much says it's straightforward from uh, from S in all skeletons. So go, iterating through skeletons where S where uh, the skeleton has been tracked, we're going to select the first one. So now uh, let's go ahead and do the call here. So get ske oops get what do I call it? Get skeleton, get skeleton, fantastic. Get get skeleton, get skeleton, and we're gonna first pass in the e, and then we're gonna pass in the me or the reference to me. So uh, now let's make sure if me is equal to null, then we're just gonna return because it's still broken. Otherwise, we're going to create a uh, well. Otherwise, we're gonna execute. Uh, this other function, which is just setting the camera point, or uh, um, uh, yes, well, to the to the skeleton. So oh, we're gonna get the camera point. Um, yada yada yada. Na, 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 na. Anyways, 
back to uh, explaining. We're just going to create a function here, a private void git, uh, git camera point. We're going to pass in a skeleton. Oops. Skeleton. Uh, and we're just, it's just going to be me. And then all frames ready event arc. So basically the same exact stuff we passed into the last one in a different order. So, and here we're going to be using depth image frame. And I'm just going to call that depth is equal to e dot open depth image frame. So it looks familiar once again. So if depth is equal to null or the sensor is equal to null, we're just going to return. So if something happened with the sensor, like it was unplugged or something. Uh, sorry about that, Microsoft sending me reports. Um, so what we're going to do now is map a joint to the location to the uh, um, of the head. So uh, well, we're going to use the head, which is a joint, to map the location to the depth. Uh, it's hard to explain, but the depth the code may explain it better. So depth image point head depth point is equal to depth dot map from skeleton point first uh, sorry not first uh, thinking first or default uh, me and um, we're gonna do me dot joints so we're gonna get all the joints and we're going to access the joint type and we're gonna get just the head and we're gonna get the position from that joint. Um, next we need to get the color point so color image uh, point color uh, let's keep it consistent head color point is equal to uh, depth dot map to color image point fantastic and we're gonna pass in the head depth point dot x the uh, head depth point dot y and then we're gonna pass in our color image format which this is why we created a resolution of 640 by 480 so we do color image uh, image format there it is color image format dot RGB resolution uh, 640 by 480 which is 30 frames per second which is the frame count we want so uh, now all we need to do is set that point uh, basically we're going to take the image the face image that we have um, and we're going to map it to the head joint of anybody of a person so let's go ahead and do that that we can do in two lines of code we can do canvas Oh, this always oh, this reminds me. Uh, I did this last time. Um, let's go back over here into our main window, and let's create a uh, a canvas element. Uh, canvas, and let's drag it in there, and uh, let's actually cut this out. This background image and paste it inside of the canvas and let's cut this image and paste it inside of uh, the canvas and the this other image is on top of it I think uh, well let's first make our canvas the correct size so let's scale it up to match the size of this we want it to be uh, let's just do it down here the width will be 640 and the height will be 480 <coughs> excuse me now let's just uh, move that up to the top here actually and type 480 here again so now we need uh, I don't know if this is behind it or something uh, no I think it's on top 
Yeah, it's on top. So we have to write our source again because um, we cut it and pasted it. <clears throat> Interesting, it went away. Um, all right, sorry, I just jumped out and jumped back in, but it's still, it's right there, so it should work out. So let's make sure this is at the top corner. And now let's go back because uh, now we can set the canvas.set left property to our uh, our image, which is just face. And then we can pass in uh, the head color point dot x minus the uh, face dot width divided by two. So the middle point of the image is what this is, and we're just mapping it to the color point. So let's do it again. Canvas dot set top face head color point dot y subtracted by face dot height divided by two. Now uh, let's scroll back up to execute our function here get camera point. Let's pass in me and then E. And I believe that's all. Let me check real quick. And uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and run this. And we should be all good. You can see it's uh, following me around here and it's stuck to my hip. So Everything is quite all right. So that shows that everything's working pretty well. And uh, I'll give a quick pass over of the code. Uh, so if you did catch it, you can pause it at any point, copy it down. And of the XAML, uh, which is basically all you need is this part down here. So. Uh, Thanks, that's how we get it started, and we'll see what comes up next time. So, until next time.